Welcome back to the international news stage. I'm Tian He from Stuff Talk TV, and today we have Dr. Stephen Lebo from Valencell here to give us a brief overview of wearable tech and the metrics used behind it. So, uh, Dr. Lebo, could you give us a brief uh, introduction of what Valencell does? Oh, you bet. So, Valencell is a technology provider in the wearable biometric sensor space. So, we provide core critical technology that's required for earbuds and armbands and wristbands to accurately measure various different biometrics like heart rate, respiration rate, and other biometric parameters. And then allow you to make interesting use cases and applications that use that data in an interesting way to tell people more about the direction of the health and fitness. Well, when we're looking at wearable tech, we are very concerned about the accuracy of it because as you know, we are looking at how many steps you've been taking, your heart rate, um, but in this aspect, how will accurate wearables drive adoption and growth in the market? And which current products do you think are designed for success and working very well today? Well, in the uh, mass consumer space, uh, one of the things that's required for wearables to not be stuck in the sock drawer is really, really interesting use cases. Cases where you can show someone how their health is improving or fitness is improving over time. But the only way to do that is with accurate information. The information needs to be accurate. It needs to be actionable, and it also it, it needs to be personalized. And without the accuracy, you, you can't do the assessment. Uh, it, no meaning at all. Uh, without actionable data, it's powerless. And then if you don't have personalized data, then it's like boring. I mean, it's not even personalized. It's, not, it's irrelevant. Mm. I mean, you're not talking about personalized data. So does this actually vary across different wearable tech? Because everyone has a different way of using wearable tech. What is your opinion on that? On, you mean like how you might wear wearable tech? Yep. Yeah, um, we have some of our licensees, they make audio headphones. Some of them uh, make armbands and wristbands, and it depends on the use case. There's kind of two major use cases. One's called in session, mm -hmm. and it's exercising first responder, military applications. Some of our technology is actually being integrated in military headphones today for monitoring soldiers and vital status. Uh, and other use cases are 24-7, and that's things you might wear all day long. It might be a health uh, monitor, and, and, or it might be a fitness trainer, for example. Mm. Well, besides the accuracy of it, we're also looking at the measurement behind it. And when we are look, talking about measurement, it's like biometrics. Now, what is the main difference between biometric wearables and your normal wearables? Are uh, certain form factors actually better for measuring different um, activities? Yeah, uh, before biometrics were put in wearables, a lot of wearables had activity tracking, and, and many wearables still do, and it tells you your footsteps and how you're moving, but it doesn't tell you how your body's responding to what you're doing. And so that's the missing element that biometrics answers. So to complete the picture of what direction your health is going, you need not just to know what you've done, in that context, that's important, but you also gotta know how your body's responding to what you've done. So. Right now, what do you think are the best form of biometric measurement in terms of wearable tech? Well, there's a lot of good uh, implementations I see. Uh, what folks are trying to do is uh, implement in two different cases. One I told you about is you know, the in-session case where it's continuous, very accurate, telling you if you're in the right heart rate zones and doing fitness analysis. The other case is just living your life, not even thinking like in your, the wrist device you have now. Mm. If that wrist device could turn on and measure certain things about you at certain times and then make a map, a storyboard of how your health and fitness are changing, that's a very interesting use case. Right, but with all the data available, what is the best way to use them? Because just collecting data itself is not the, it's not the only way. We need to analyze and actually put them in good use. What do you think are the best options for wearable tech? I think uh, the best opportunities for wearable tech are in um, use cases where you can really address the consumer need for this, this actionable, um, personalized, accurate information. Well, we're also look, looking at a lot of new industries where wearable tech will go. And as, in, as today, we've seen a quite a number of interesting wearable tech here at CES. So uh, what do you think will be the next industry that wearable tech can tap into in terms of jumping onto the bandwagon? And what will be the likely new products that will be launched this year? Yeah, I, you know, I'm really interested in uh, how um, the technology is going to go into these vertical markets, for example, uh, uh, health, health space and devices that people view as telling them very meaningful 
uh, insights about themselves and that can communicate with doctors. I'm also very interested in devices that can help people get fitter quicker in a very interesting and compelling way. And I think what's required is that the market is experimenting right now. It's experimenting with sensor technology and it's experimenting with use cases. But they're starting to converge. People are finding ways to combine content with accurate information to provide a really interesting user experience for people to, to get fit in an entertaining and fun and enjoyable way. Well, as you can see, wearable tech is still a relatively new industry and a new market for people to tap into. Based on what you've seen for the last year or so, which are the ones that you think have actually worked and what are the form factors that will probably be best for the next year or so? Yeah, you know, there's something special about the ear. The ear is a magic form factor. You measure more the ear more accurately. And so for uh, use cases where people are wearing earbuds for any period of time, sampling them and taking measurements about how, what direction their fitness is going uh, is, a, uh, is a really compelling use case. Uh, other form factors are interesting for people who want to wear things 24-7, like armbands and wristbands, and they're great. We license there, but there's really something magical about the ear. Uh, you know, you can get clinical accuracy of so many different metrics, and you don't need to wear it all the time to get that value. So you mentioned a lot about ears and wristbands. Any other body parts do you think will be viable for wearable well, I, tech? Yeah, I, I'm interested in also uh, some people like one of... Some people want to monitor their health and fitness and don't want anyone to know that they're doing that. And so there's some form factors that are hidden, uh, and it'll be interesting to see. Uh, and, and uh, for example, armbands that are upper arm that you don't have to even show anyone that you're wearing, or uh, maybe things hidden below or integrated below your clothing, for example. It's interesting you mentioned um, something about what people don't want to s have them seeing that they're using wearable tech. In that aspect, do you think it's one of the key um, factors for the new development of wearable tech to make it as invisible as possible? No, you know, it depends. Uh, if you look at what some companies are doing, they're making it more visible, they're making more accessorizing it, they make it more beautiful for people. In other cases, people are trying to make it more hidden. The, 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 the reality is for a wearable device, people like to wear different things. So there's going to be a diversity of people who want to show off what they got, they want to show off their bling, and there's people who just don't want you to even know what they're doing. It's, it's, it's pr very personalized. Yep, it's very two polar opposites here, right? Something that not, wants to be very invisible. But in your, in your opinion, what is the most beautiful wearable tech we have seen up to now since it's launched? Most launch? beautiful? Yep. Oh, Lord. You know, when I think of beauty, I think of things a lot different than wearable tech. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so I'm, I think I'm going to say no comment. <laughs> well, in terms of practicality, which do you think is the best one? Uh, as far as in the marketplace today, yep. I would say that, I'm, you know, well, first of all, you ask the guy who's incredibly biased because I like to exercise with earbuds. So, I, you know, I like to exercise with biometric earbuds that I can just go for a run, get my biometric information, get my uh, analysis done, and then I've got it with me. And I'm, and I'm done to the next exercise and I know what to do. So I exercise uh, with products that are powered by Perform Tech, our mm -hmm. technology, and there are a, a number of them that you have choices to, to purchase in the marketplace today. So earbuds are definitely one of the favorite form factors that you see right now. For me, it is, but I'm an earbud guy. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, I'm not really a, a wristwatch kind of wearing guy. So, so do I, you think it's actually kind of a fad, or would it become a mainstream form factor in the near future? Um, it's the... Right now, the market is really early, and it's not, some people call it a fad, it's not really a fad because the market is still just growing. Uh, I think that what's gonna drive user adoption is the interesting use cases, you know? Right now, think about it, your phone, right? Your phone is always interesting because it's always new. You got a new phone call, a new text. Um, you know, something new is always showing up on your phone. You feel like you need it. Uh, wearable devices are just starting to learn how to make things continually interesting. And, and I, I think when you combine that accurate information with actionable feedback in a personalized way, that is what's going to guide uh, uh, the, these, these interesting use cases. So do you firmly believe that smartphones are the main driving force for wearable tech to, become, to be widely adopted in the near future? I think a lot, uh, all the, the near-term um, wearable tech is definitely smartphone connected in the near term. But I think in the longer term, you're going to see a divorce from that. You're going to see devices. I'll give you an example. Um, one of our uh, licensees, Skosh, uh, they have a, a product that's an armband used for exercise. Uh, the first product has to work with a phone. The second product stores everything on the device, and you could just download it to your phone or computer later on. Mm -hmm. And so you see a, a lot of these types of um, uh, 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 products starting to diverge to where they can be independent of a phone. So 
you've been at CES for how many days already? Two days or more? How long have you been at CES? Uh, oh, I tell you, I've been here uh, two days, but it feels like I've been here a month. <laughs> so have you seen any interesting or weird wearable tech up to now? Uh, yes. Uh, what, what I'm seeing is that people are doing more with the data. They're at least making a big attempt to do more with the data. Uh, and also, uh, interesting things where people are trying to make the wearable devices more fun to wear, uh, more appealing to wear. I think those are some of the in interesting trends we're going to see, and that, that's going to carry over for the next few years. I think that uh, not this year, but probably 2016 is when you're going to see some really uh, interesting use cases where you want to wear a wearable device because there's so much good it does for you that you could talk to your friends about. You know, it's not quite there yet, I'd say. Yeah. I mean, earlier when I had a conversation, I mentioned we saw this sock that's actually a wearable, uh, wearable tech sock. So it actually measures the impact on your foot based on three sensors. Yeah, you might be right? referring to the Sensoria product. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe uh, is a Sensoria product. Yes. Yeah, That's right. they have some interesting technology for uh, doing gait analysis uh, and also uh, foot impact. It's really interesting. It's an activity-based technology or, or activity monitoring and motion monitoring technology. Uh, and it's also something that has broad applicability in fitness and health. It'll be interesting to see how that takes off. Uh, I think if you're going to do a, a product that is uh, embedded in clothing, a good, the, the approach they're taking is a good one. It's a small one. So besides the usual metrics such as steps taken, your pulse rate, and your heart rate, what do you think are the more interesting metrics that can be implemented into wearable tech in the near future? Some of the new metrics? or yep. uh, One of the things you're going to see is, and it's going to be on the borderline of fitness and health, <laughs> is um, things like RR Interval, which have uh, strong implications on fitness, but also on health. Mm -hmm. You're going to see this being, being used in devices to tell you, uh, for example, what's interesting about RR Interval is it can be used to tell you about the direction of your fitness and be used in fitness training but also it can tell you about your health. It can tell you, for example, if you might be at risk of a cardiac event or you're overstressing yourself in a bad way. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it'll be, I think, uh, the, the frontier of how you look at your heart rate changes in time, heart rate variability will be explored uh, 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 very thoroughly in the next, next few years. All right, so let me pose one last question to you. If you had, if you're able to build a wearable tech from scratch, what would it do? If I could just make a wearable... Yes. Oh, oh, God. You know what it would be like? Did you see the movie Her? Yeah. Yeah, with, uh, uh, what was it, Joaquin Phoenix? Yeah. Yeah, Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix, Phoenix and... Yeah, I, you know, I was talking about this the other day. I mean, I think I would love, I would love to have, like, going out for a workout, put in my headphones, say, hey, how did I do last time? What, 